I was once a camper myself. But it wasn't anything like this. Jeep Creep. Hey, Jeep Creepers. On this episode of Ammo Can or Ammo Box Stove, Pellet Stove, uh, I want to first um, take and let everybody know um, that I was actually warned um, by one of my uh, YouTube subscribers, which I'm very thankful for, that when you're buying steel that you're going to use for a stove, you have to keep something in mind. A um, lot of products like that I bought that I was super excited about, uh, this guy, uh, you really need to pay attention because right, where's it at? There it is, zinc plated, okay? So steel rust, if you buy weldable steel like this, you'll see this was, I purchased in this in the store like this, um, it rusts. So they try to keep it from rusting before you get it home by covering it in oil. But most people that are um, making things like, you know, garden latches and stuff, they don't want it to rust, they don't want to paint it. So they cover it in zinc, that prevents um, rusting. The problem with zinc is, is zinc is extremely toxic, okay? Um, you know, you can't weld it, you can't cook it, you can't do anything. And for the matter of fact as well, um, the other thing to look out for is galvanized steel. Galvanized steel is also another coating that they use, um, which is also toxic when you burn it. So you don't want to use that either. Um, I was also looking uh, at other coatings like uh, brass and bronze. Now, if it's pure, which it's kind of hard to tell if it is because they don't really tell you usually, I think, if it's pure, it could contain zinc as well. Um, I'm not sure about nickel. I didn't really look up nickel, but nickel coating is another coating they use. Um, not too sure. Can you remove the coatings? Eh, kind of, but do you want to when you're in a camper? Nah, I don't, you know, better safe than sorry. So what you can get, I got this at Ace. Um, these are door hinges, but there's no holes, so I'm going to have to drill them. But the one thing you want to kind of look for, like if you look on the label, Right there is weldable steel. Now, weldable steel is just raw steel. Um, it's safe for welding. It doesn't have any chemicals on it or any treatments. The only thing that it might have is uh, a slight oil coating to keep it from rusting, which when you weld, uh, you usually want to clean it really good just so you get better grounding. Um, I'm not 100% sure on this one, so don't quote me. But they have uh, hinges that are just painted black. Now, they have oiled bronze, but again, that's back to bronze, so that's a no-no. Um, I can't see anywhere on here where it has any kind of coating on the back. So, uh, I'm guessing it's just paint, okay? Now, of course, paint is not 100% safe either. I mean, paints, I don't think they're allowed to use lead in paint anymore at all. Um, but obviously, that would be poisonous. Um, who knows what other chemicals are in paint, so... You're going to want to cook the stove a bunch of times in an open area before um, ever attempting to use it in a closed area. And I still don't recommend it because you have other problems too, like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, all kinds of gases. Uh, you can actually burn the oxygen out of your place too if you don't feed oxygen um, to the stove if you're in a camper or a tent or whatever. So be really careful about this. And this is uh, this is all on your own. I'm not telling you to do this. This is more educational than anything, and if you want to be safe, just use this in an open area. Don't try to use it in a closed area, even though I'm planning on doing that. So that's my little disclaimer for today, and uh, let's get started. The next up, I think, which makes the most logical amount of sense for me, is I'm going to cut out a slot in the bottom, which is going to serve as an oven. Um, yes, this thing will have an oven. It's going to be a two-inch uh, high uh, door. And uh, I'll probably take and um, put it on hinges or some kind of mechanism. I'm not sure yet how we're going to make that look. But let's go ahead and measure it out and get this thing cut out. So just for fun, I'm going to make it two and an eighth. Can't seem to find my other one. Mm 
Let me see if I measure by 10. Yeah, that works out pretty good. Okay, good. Technique, drilling and jigging. That's actually pretty good if you look in there. It's uh, just starting to scratch a little bit, which is good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a false bottom above that. So this stove area will be um, a separate chamber, basically. Um, Cause if you're doing cooking in there, you're probably not gonna want ash and stuff falling in there. And this is not a broiler, so I don't want direct heat out of it as well. Um, broiler does sound kind of cool, but cooking with pellets, you're probably gonna get a lot of ash in your food. Uh, I don't know that I'd recommend doing that. So what we're gonna use is this guy. Just needs to be trimmed down just a smidge on the width, but the height's pretty good. And uh, we'll just cut that off. space here so uh move to the basement no that's not an old man peeing in the background that would be my well pump or my sump pump okay this is the line for the door i want to fold over x amount for uh Kind of like a handle. See clamps, but I think these are the biggest ones I have laying around, so ones here. That makes more sense. Alright, let's watch the magic happen now. Oh my god, like butter. I'm not completely out of place. Pretty sharp. Pretty square. Nice and clean. Got it on the line. Looking good. So my handle protrudes out a little bit now. Um, I wonder if I can put one more bend in it to get it to go down and around. Let me figure that out. I think what I'm going to do is just pound it out with a hammer. It makes more sense. Once it's, uh, once it's down flat.
So now we got this little L-shaped handle. So now you got a little handle there. Uh, considering that it's gonna be piping hot too, maybe I'll put a little fixture on there or something so you can grab it so it's not super hot. But uh, well, there's that part. Okay, back to the garage. We got our freshly formed door lid. And uh, we're gonna need to trim some of that off. But I am gonna skip to the next step for now. Let's get the floor put in, okay? Because this won't work without that floor. And uh, we got a lot of welding to do. to measure the inside of this. Oh, beautiful. Let's cut that line off. I'm gonna need to round the edges off. like that just about did it all right let's hopefully get this fixed Clarity has been reversed. Uh, I'm using uh, my Lincoln 140 HD. I'm using uh, B for voltage and 5 for line speed. Okay, well, we got our ugly welding done on the uh, bottom cavity. Now I need to cut a channel in here so we can run that divider in there. So let me uh, go ahead and get that cut out. Oh, look at that. Yeah, see? Works out pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, cleaned up right here so I can get flap against it with a piece of steel and get these right between and straight out.
little bit, but I think it was right about there. All right, so I ran out of weld wire and uh, I bought some new wire. What it had in there was 0.35 um, flux core weld, which I guess it came with. Um, I switched to a non-flux core and it's 0.3 and I changed the tip too. So let's see if that makes any difference. Just long enough. Shot. Yeah, I like that. Well, we can call. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We can call this step. <coughs> man, done. All right, we got all of our welding in. And you can see it's getting better. Right there on the top there. Don't look at the bottom. That's real ugly. You see, I got kind of something that resembles a weld, not like that right there, but whatever. It's super strong. There's no air leaks, sort of. I mean, it's not watertight or super airtight. It's close enough. All right. Now I need to cut out. You can kind of see where my welds are. I need a door right there. Just knocked out. Okay. Cleaned up my uh, my welds, and uh, you know I filled the the circuit right there. Right there good enough it's uh most important thing is it's super structurally sound now it's cannot bend it easy um that's the most important thing so this is nice and clean i'm gonna put a seal around this i'm gonna clean the metal first or um hit it with the angle grinder So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this down first, and the seal's going to go on this side. And then I'm going to have a door, boop, and it locks down nice and tight. So first we need to get this glued down, of course she ain't going to move, and then we can look at doing a door. So let's get our mount figured out. get my uh, seal on there my rope seal and uh, not really much to see there it's not like you missed a whole lot but we need to let that dry about 12 hours so back at it tomorrow